surely on Saturday because um, it cost County in the end. And I think the nerves probably got to Matty Warburton, and, and I think that's why he missed. It. And you know, you might say the pitch was a bit lively, but for me, it's all about nerves. Yeah, well, Stockport County, as you can probably hear now, make their way out onto the pitch as led by the officials and the Curzon Ashton skipper. We hear Paul Turnbull lead Stockport County out, all in blue today with White Sox County. Curzon Ashton in all light green, a luminous green you may say. It should, should be a bright enough fixture as it is. Yeah, their uh, shirts on the team sheet are described as neon, and I think that's probably as close as you can imagine it. But a great atmosphere inside Edgley Park this afternoon, a great crowd, great build-up, and we're looking forward to this one. It is Stockport County against Curzon Ashton, the final game of County's regular league season. And uh, down on the bench, Jason Gilchrist. I wonder, I just wonder whether he could be a, a key figure for County this afternoon. Jim Gallon's got the coat and the long trousers on today. I think uh, he'll probably abandon those before you know it. Big beaming smile on his face as he comes over to the main stand to uh, meet and greet one or two of the supporters over here. And uh, good to see him looking relaxed and calm because I think that is what's needed. You, you need to rub off on the players. Yeah, there's not. I mean, certainly looking at him and his body language there, he's a very relaxed man. He's very calm. Clapping to the cheetle end, who of course reciprocate the gesture. Uh, real fan favourite here the gaffer in it I think he he appreciates them just as much as they appreciate him but like you say it does rub off onto the players and if, if a manager is a little nervy or a little uh, what, whatever it, it does transcend down to them just as it does when the supporters do that but the players look calm today and what's really good is realistically there is a high chance now of us being in the playoffs rather than winning the league so the, the, the fact that Jake Kirby Elliot Osborne Matty Warburton are all in the first 11 they're going to be bubbling around each other, playing off each other, and getting that playing time together, going up to what would potentially be the most important mini-tournament of their careers so far. You think that's a very positive step for me. Because Nashton, we barely mentioned the opposition today, but uh, they have struggled this season, but uh, they are safe now after that terrific run, winning six out of six after New Year's Day. But it's a very young side, average age of around 21, 22. They are the lowest scorers outside the bottom four. Not a single one of their players has reached double figures this year. Ryan Brook, with seven for the season, is their top scorer. Ryan Brook, who's very well known by Paul Turnbull. They actually work together away from uh, football. They've got a, a little coaching company, uh, which is, uh, has done well for them. So they've, uh, they've done very, very well between themselves. It's... Uh, a side that's really defied the odds with uh, attendances of around 465 at home. It's the second lowest in the National League North. But only Ashton United have a lower average attendance. So uh, they really have defied the odds to stay where they have. County down the years have played uh, Curzon Ashton eight times in recent seasons. The Hatters winning six, drawing two and losing none of those. This season they went to the Tameside Stadium, won by two goals to nil, a Sam Walker penalty and a goal from Elliot Osborne, helped of course by a red card for Cam McJanet, the left back. We're ready for kickoff here at Edgeley Park. The Hatters defending the Cheadle end in this first half. That's a good sign already. They'll be kicking towards their own fans after the restart. It's County against Curzon and it's uh, our final league game of the season at Edgeley Park. Just uh, one more away trip to go down at Nuneaton next weekend. Will County be top of the table again by five o'clock tonight? Or will it be another case of heartbreak for the Hatters? We're underway at Edgeley Park. It's uh, Curzon Ashton playing the ball forward through Chris Rowney, the midfielder, former Oldham Athletic man. Wide on that left-hand side is Luke Wall trying to keep it in play and he's worked the ball brilliantly through a tightest of gaps as the Hatter's very hesitant at getting it clear Jake Kirby caught in possession and a shot into the side netting from uh, John McAtee who's on loan from Shrewsbury well it's uh, Curzon Ashton who made the early running Chris yeah just a little reminder for Stockport County that Curzon Ashton aren't here to follow any script uh, and for them it's a huge occasion I mean speaking to people this week saying Stockport County is like a cup final for a lot of these teams well, look at these players today, the Curzon Ashton side, they're coming playing in front of an attendance like this. Why not try and impress? Yeah, Elliot 
Osborne a bit careless in possession there, deep in his own half. As County try and force a corner at the other end, and they've got the decision. A huge roar from the home supporters as the Hatters get their first chance to uh, test the Nash, as they're affectionately known. From a dead ball, Jim Gannon on his feet already applauding the fans. Maybe he was a little nervous about the reception that his players might get today, but it's been positive all around the stadium. Can they keep that going by scoring early here today? Left-footed in-swinging corner, this from Sam Walker, the veteran midfielder, whips it in at pace. It's only half cleared. Turnbull trying to keep it alive for County. Mulhern dispossessed in the end, and it's a, a good clearance upfield for McAtee to hold up. The man on loan from Shrewsbury plays it back to the left-back McJanet, but he's given it away as County break through the middle with Warburton. It's an ambitious ball, and what a brave challenge from Jamie Stott on his final appearance for the club this afternoon. Joel Senior did not fancy that. Senior wins the throw-in, but goodness me, he was not favourite there to get to, uh, to that one, Walker. Yeah, Jamie Stott showing, even though it is his last game, he's still 100% committed to the cause. He had a lot of ground to make up there. Uh, obviously the change in shape maybe he just threw Sam Walker who played the ball to where Scott Duxbury usually would uh, be perched I've got to tell you John Frank Mulhern for me even in the first couple of minutes he's shown that he's up for it today yeah. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for him now Bell's had that number 9 shirt and I think he will have felt a little hard done to uh, losing the shirt in the first place but the fact that he's got a chance now in such a big game go out and take it well the players if they were nervous hopefully the noise of the five or 6,000 here today will uh, be making them feel 10 feet tall this afternoon. It's a tremendous atmosphere inside this stadium. It's a magnificent old ground that has seen so much drama through the years. Not uh, much positive drama in recent seasons. And uh, these hatters of the class of 2019 hoping to, cha hoping to change that. As Palmer goes long, too high, too long. And that was the story of uh, Saturday, really the ball goes over the head of second striker Jake Kirby and then a poor clearance from Cameron Mason the goalkeeper it goes out for a county throw on this near side taken by Duxbury back to Jamie Stott will be uh, a miss on that final game down at Nuneaton next weekend It'll certainly be missed in the playoffs if uh, county were to suffer the fate of going into that end of season shootout they'll hope to avoid it though County throw, left wing, down the Hatters' uh, near side. Scott Duxbury prepares to uh, try and hurl this in. It's a good game this for Stockport County today. Two really Great. tough opposition in Blythe Barnes and Chorley in quick succession. This is what you want. Duxbury cross, dealt with by Hunt, who nods it clear, but only as far as Adam Thomas playing at right back. Finds Elliot Osborne playing just in front of him. Osborne again is giving it away second touch and the second time he's not found a blue shirt Turnbull from the halfway line back to keeper Ben Hinchliffe Jim Gallon just having a word with Osborne on the far side as Hinchliffe's kick into the wind goes into touch and already Jim Gannon the game less than four and a half minutes old is dispensing with the uh, <laughs> the jacket it's interesting to see this formation a couple of players getting used to it Elliot Osborne's been one Jake Kirby's playing very central which we're not really used to seeing him do, although I know Jim's got plans for him potentially to be moved central next season. Warburton winning the ball back for County in the middle of the Curzon half, but uh, not for too long. Cleared by McJanet, but that will be easy for Ben Hinchliff. Wind assisted, it runs through to the County keeper. The Hatters number one, 20 clean sheets for the season. As County play out from the back now, with Duxbury on that left wing. Slows down by the lively Lewis Wardle, but he's got away from Wardle now. Down that left flank, Scott Duxbury still motoring, getting away from Senior and winning the corner. Great work again. Listen to the ovation for Duxbury as he wins a corner for County. Yeah, he had no right to get through there, Scott Duxbury. And that's what that's what you want to see from him, that tenacity, that strength, just to hold his man off and then outbeat another one for pace. That's what we that's what we've come to expect the standard of from Scott Duxbury. Brilliant one. Still no goals in the northeast. Spenny Moore against Chorley. It's a corner to County. It's Turnbull to take. It'll be a right footed in swinger. Stop making the move to the far post. It's gone beyond into Palmer! Yes! Yeah! Ash Palmer drills it into the top corner. The keeper got his hand to it, but it was too hot to keep out. County have made the breakthrough. Just five and a half minutes on the clock. Ash Palmer, the goal scorer. County one, 
occurs a nil and Chorley will be feeling the pressure County have scored well that's what we said all the little chinks everything's got to go our way we've got to take an early lead we've got to hope for a spending more goal we've done our bit now Stockport County look too hot to handle these first few minutes of the game every man sticking to his task and now County are applying the pressure Ash Palmer gives County the advantage here and they'll know all about that goal up in the northeast. In the live league table, it will still mean that uh, Chorley are top. But uh, such early days, it's probably not even worth looking at that. But a very, very potentially important goal that for County. And Ash Palmer, well, if there were any nerves, his fourth goal of the season might just have settled those, Chris. I've still got the live, <laughs> the live league table up in front of me. It's not too early for me. I, I, it's such an exciting goal for Stockport County and it, it puts the feel-good factor into all these fans all the, however many thousand it is here they'll be feeling the, the relaxed nature just kicking that little more now well you're right and if Spenny Moore can do County a favour the Hatters are top of the table again but County have just got to concentrate and focus on doing their bit and that's exactly what they did great delivery by the way from Paul Turnbull it was a little too high for Jamie Stott, but it landed very sweetly for Ash Palmer, who struck it first time. The goalkeeper, Cam Mason, got his hand to it, but he was just fizzing into that top corner. Nothing he could do to keep that out. And Ash Palmer, his fourth goal of the season, and what a crucial goal that could prove to be. County 1, Curzon 0. You're listening to Imagine in association with MyDigitalAccounts.com. Now to just moving the ball around now, just, just reaffirming their status in this game uh, as the dominant team. Just everybody getting a touch again, getting the ad uh, adrenaline back under control because there's still a long way to go. You can't let it get to your head, but my word, what an early goal does for you. It's positivity all around now and the players have looked so much more confident in running at Curzon Ashton. Thomas on the front foot finds Mulhern, Mulhern down the inside right channel, challenged by the defender but comes back out to Thomas who crosses, laid off then by Walker, it's still loose inside the area, Kirby across the face of goal and just wide of the far post, County almost doubling their lead in the eighth minute of the game but it stays, County 1, Curzon 0. Matty Warburton had his arms outstretched, Jake why have you not given it me and I'm in space but I think when Jake Kirby said look I had the opportunities He's applauded him as well. Matty Warburton eager to get back on, uh, amongst the chances. But Jake Kirby, he's been out for a long time. He wants to show the fans and the manager that he can offer something in front of goal as well. Yeah, Jake Kirby. Who, uh, are there any county fans wondering why he's back in the side today? Well, according to the backroom staff, he's, uh, he's trained so well for the last fortnight. It's uh, become increasingly difficult to leave him out. And that's why he's been picked today. And there he is getting involved in the dirty work as well. Nicking the ball off the toes of Luke Merrill and putting it out for a throw-in on this near side. A throw-in to the Nash. Kurz and Ashton who trail here by a goal to nil. Throw-in to be taken by Joel Senior who was uh, FC United's Player of the Year last season. Left them just a, a couple of months ago to make the move to the, uh, the Tameside Stadium. Still only 20 years of age, Joel Senior. Looks to have a good future ahead of him though. The, uh, young right back. Started out as a, a kid at, uh, at Main Road FC. He's been dispossessed here though. County have it back with Mulhern. What a clever reverse pass from Mulhern to release Matty Warburton. But great strength from Oliver Thornley, who's another good prospect. Stepped across there to uh, deny Warburton the chance to go clean through on goal. But what a pass from Frank Mulhern, Chris. Yeah, I told you from the beginning, you know, we've seen that he's... He's just up for it. He's just uh, Ben Hinchliffe, by the way, getting involved with uh, some centre-half work, shepherding the ball out there. But Frank Mulhern, he just looks up for it right from the get-go. And he's got that touch about him. He's got that, that turn and that clever through ball. I have a needle kind of stuff. There is not a, a traditional out-and-out -out number nine, big bullish centre-forward, more like Niall Bell or maybe Jason Oswell. He's, he's something a little bit different, and that's what he brings to the table. Yeah, triangle of football again from the Hatters, and this time they've released Thomas down the right flank, and he's going to take on the left-back. McJanet gets his cross in towards Jake Kirby, a glancing header from Kirby, blocked by the shins of Chris Rowney, and then cleared by the uh, visitors back into county territory. The visitors, of course, Curzon Kurs and Ashton, managed now by Mark Bradshaw, who spent the previous ten years as head coach and uh, made an instant impact. Manager of the month for January, would you believe? on a run of uh, six successive wins, which uh, secured their status in the National League North. Of course, uh, big shoes to fill, replacing the very popular 
John Flanagan, who was perhaps surprisingly let go after seven years with the club and two promotions. They've spent four years in the National League North, which is a, a remarkable record, really, for the Nash. <laughs> I don't know about you, Chris. I, it looked a harsh sacking, didn't it? But sometimes you need to make a change. Yeah, I, I think John Flanagan, if I'm, if I'm honest, I think he was kind of losing things over there. You know, his, his recent conduct against County was something that you weren't used to seeing. And I just think every now and again, OK, it's great to have stability. And it, something like you say, they, they've not gone for wholesale change. Keeping someone in who's who in the back room, knows the squad, knows the staff. It was probably a smart move. And um, like you say, in the short term, certainly, it sorted them out. Curzon Ashton, they were playing in the Northern Counties when uh, the Hatters were playing in the Championship, would you believe? What a turnaround now to be playing at the same level, but County will hope that this is the season that they can uh, make the break, get out of uh, Tier 6 as it is. So throw in to the visitors just inside their own half, which Joel Senior will take. Still no goals up in the North East, Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. Surely top of the league, County now with that goal from Ash Palmer breathing down the necks. Turnbull shaking off the attentions of the onrushing McAtee. And then a lovely ball down the flank from Duxbury. And Mulhern's done so well to nod that into the path of Matty Warburton who's inside the box and he's won a corner for County now. The Hatters are rampant. Yeah, screaming forward, stop for County. Adam Thomas doing it, Matty Warburton, Scott Duxbury, they all fancy the chances running at Curzon Ashton and that early goal has shown that Curzon are well they're, they're breakable at the back they, they, they tend to get creaky when applied under pressure and all the attacking players fancy a goal Curzon under the cosh County looking for goal number two the goal difference could be important of course in these final two games of the season the corner is deep it's punched away by a nervous looking Mason County will try and recycle the ball from the edge of the area, but uh, it's Curzon Ashton threatening to counter-attack. And there's no flag, but the ball is over-hit anyway. I don't think he's going to be able to keep that in on the far side, Luke Wall. It was a promising counter-attack, though, by the visitors, and the Nash there, a little unlucky not to get a run on goal. Yeah, and uh, that's what we were saying before, John, about keeping concentration. The early goal is great, but you've just got to manage it. When, when a team looks so vulnerable, you all want to pounce on them, and and run forward. I don't even think Curzon were particularly looking to counter County there. It just happened, it just, it just fell about. The opportunity came and he's just put it one forward. But County got to stay switched on to that and just keep at least one man back because it would be horrible now to, to go and concede an equaliser. Mike Flynn's here to watch this one as his uh, former County fullback, Paul Williams. Little Willow, as he was affectionately known, is here today. Just in the director's box to our right hand side. Good to see him here. Warburton, Osborne, dispossessed, not got into the game yet, Elliot Osborne. And it's the visitors breaking with Senior down the right flank. Sam Walker's gone across to track his progress and he's made the block but at the cost of a corner. Good tracking from Sam Walker, like, I'm a bit surprised like you say with Elliot Osborne, he's, he's looking at his players saying where's my help, where's my support but the, the players are up for this today, everyone's finding the moves in the right. Elliot Osborne for me, he's just got to get a little bit more into it. He, He's possibly County's most talented football player. Um, as soon as he gets his head into the game with Matty Warburton, he's unstoppable. Curzon beaten 3-0 at home by Southport on Good Friday. They had an extra day's recovery, of course. That's uh, partly why Jim Gannon, I think, has made these changes, but also to be more aggressive this afternoon. The corner only half cleared. It's come over to the opposite side of the box now. It's gone behind. Very tentative touch from Lewis Wardle, who's on loan from Barnsley's under-23s. County have a goal kick. They also have the lead. Quarter an hour gone here on Imagine in association with mydigitalaccounts.com. It remains County 1, Curzon Ashton 0. It's interesting, isn't it? Trying to gauge the uh, impression of the fans, the energy of the fans. Obviously, delighted to see the team lead by a goal to nil in such early circumstances, but at the same time, constantly checking the scores of another ground. It's it's just such an interesting one to read. Well, Warburton lets it run for Osborne. Great turn from Osborne. He's done well there. And he finds Thomas on the right wing. Thomas clips it in. It's too high for Jake Kirby. It's a bit of a wasted cross in the end. And the goalkeeper, Mason's able to gather that one safely. That was one of those occasions where you'd like to see Adam Thomas just fizz it in along the deck, Chris. Yeah, and that's what we've seen from Adam Thomas all season. I'm, I'm quite surprised he went for the hang it up high option. Uh, County don't really have the height. Jake Kirby offers a lot, but he's not the tallest of players. He's kind of dwarfed by 
his opposite number for Curzon Ashton and really along the deck would have suited both him and Frank a lot better. County now with a throw in deep inside the Hatters half. There's uh, news of other goals. Blyther a goal up at FC United who could go down today. Geisley also scoring at home to Darlington. That could do some damage to FC United as well. There's a foul there by Doxby. He's brought down Rowney just outside the area. Down the right hand side of the penalty box. County conceding possession from their own throw in a little cheaply and then Duxbury well he felt he had no option and he brought the man down well Scott Duxbury's done what he's had to do there and it's come from a, a short pass back from Matty Warburton who was berated by Jamie Stock turned around and gave him both barrels Sam Walker having a word with him as well and Matty Warburton almost uncharacteristically hands up to even the crowd saying I'm sorry he's got to get this out of his head apologising to everyone all the time Guys, they win today. FC United and Ashton United will both be relegated with a game to spare. Meanwhile, at the top end of the table, County leading by a goal to nil, but they've conceded a free kick in a dangerous position here. Down the right-hand side of the penalty area, almost at the dead ball line. That T junction, it's whipped in at pace. It's a very, very good defensive header from, I think it was Paul Turnbull, wasn't it, rising above everybody to flick that away. It is a corner now to the Nash on the far side. Yeah, just took it out of danger there, and it's... It was a brilliantly whipped in free kick, and in fact, lands on a green head. Ben Hinchley looked like he had no chance, but a uh, good piece of defending. It just means they've got a little bit more to do now from the, from the next set piece. So, corner to the Nash. Now, they, they like to take these out swinging corners with a clutch of players on the penalty spot. It's poor delivery. Cam McJanet trying to flick it in, but uh, didn't come off for him. Warburton steals and a clever ball through the gap then for Sam Walker but he had to try and lunge at that one and as a result the Nash win it back momentarily but their forward pass there from Lewis Wardle the Barnsley man was too heavy it goes behind for a goal kick to the Hatters 18 minutes gone here on Imagine in association with mydigitalaccounts.com it remains County 1 Kurz and Ashton nil, courtesy of that fifth minute goal from Ash Palmer He's just got to get back amongst it, Matty Warburton. I've got no doubt he's he's looking for it today. He's won oh, the ball. Oh, he's just giving the ball away, though, Chris. Well, that was that, I think that was more of the, the pass from Scott. Shocking Duxbury, really, pass from Ducks, and he's uh, he's now got to chase this down, and he's done his bit by winning it back. Now that's the thing, Chris. If you're going to make a mistake like Duxbury did, then make amends. Yeah. Oh, completely. Uh, didn't let his man get away with it. It was a, a freebie, really. That <laughs> Scott Duxbury had to go and win back. But for me. It, it, the, the point is on Matty Walton. He's, he's wanting to be everywhere because he, he, it's almost like he's trying to make amends too hard now. I think it's great to see he's offering himself for every ball. Yeah. He's making himself available, but at the same time, I want to see that arrogant player strutting his stuff again because that's when he's most dangerous. Here's McJanet stepping out of defence and going on a marauding run. In the end, the clearance from Turnbull ricocheted back off McJanet. Could have gone anywhere. Thankfully, it's gone wide, and it will be a goal kick to the Hatters who are conceding a little bit of ground since taking the early lead in this one and uh, any advocates of the playoffs Chris I, I guess you would say at least they've kept the season alive there are 10 teams at the in the top half of the division with something to play for all the way down to Kidderminster in 10th still with a chance of making the playoffs <laughs> I mean it's, it's just incredible really uh, when you look at that mix I'm not a gambling man um, I would hate to try and pick who's going to go up through the playoffs um, should it come down to if, it, if it's County or or not if, if it's Chorley who are in there but Ben Hinchcliffe had nerves of steel watching that ball go wide by the way not covering his goal there he must have had a better view than we did Low to the head here for Luke Merrill the 18 year old midfielder who's gone down so with the referee calling the physio on players taking the chance to get a breather and get a drink as well it's um, it's probably not as stifling as it was on Saturday the sun's actually gone in now it's quite cloudy and a little bit cooler than it was at the weekend so uh, it's uh, Easter Monday the temperature relenting slightly and there is quite a strong breeze as well I think the players will be appreciative of that and also appreciative of the chance to have a little break here Jim Gannon using the opportunity to get some instructions to his players as well it's interesting that the players he's talking to most is Jake Kirby Elliott Osborne and Paul Turnbull he, he wants those three I think playing around each other a little bit more. We know what Frank and Matty bring to the team. Sam Walker knows what he's doing there, but Jake and Elliot in particular not seen loads of game time in recent weeks. So if he, if he can get his message across to them and have Paul Turn will just relay it to them when they're on the pitch, I think that's sensible management. County lead here. Their first goal in three games and this hiccup in the season has really come at the wrong time. County picking up just 
four points from a possible 12 in the last four games. They've lost back-to-back -back fixtures for the first time since August. But uh, the silver lining, if you're looking for it, is that Chorley's two games, Spennymoor away today and at Bradford at Park Avenue at uh, home on Saturday. Well, both those teams, as we say, they've got something to play for. Both of them in the playoffs are looking to hold off the challenge of Blythe Spartans, of Chester, of Kidderminster, and just trying to cement their place. In fact, Spennymoor, uh, they really need the points because they'll be hunting down Brackley and thinking to themselves, well, we might get into third still, we might get a home draw. And knowing Spennymoor, I mean, what an advantage that would be in the playoffs for Spennymoor to be at home. Yeah, not, not to try and um, break down other games too much, but one thing I was really impressed with when Spennymoor came here was the effectiveness of the wide players. Now, County, I don't really think utilised. Um, oh, just a, a long clearance, by the way, from Mason, and with the wind at his back, it bounced on the edge of the County penalty area, and Hinchliffe backpedalling, he's had to tip that over the bar. That's incredible. That's almost a goal from a goal kick. Um, incredible that Ben Hinchliffe stayed alert. But yeah, Spennymore, you know, they'll look to they'll look to get under Chorley in a way County probably shouldn't probably could have done last week a little bit better and that gives you a bit of optimism. Curzon corner then from a, a bizarre set of circumstances but Janet couldn't get his head to it, it comes out to the right wing to be kept alive here by Wardle, Wardle down the line to McJanet, McJanet dispossessed by a hard-working Elliot Osborne who's growing into the game now and he's uh, defended that well and got his side a goal kick, he's starting to be more influential now, Elliot Osborne, albeit that's a, on that occasion at left back rather than uh, right midfield yeah he's, he's a great player Elliot and his engine is fantastic he's, he's all over the park and, and having him there Scott Duffield will appreciate that just having him there just helps shepherd the ball out from a corner that County weren't really expecting the hat is quite narrow today playing with this diamond in midfield so any width they do manage to get is going to come from the full backs it's going to come from Adam Thomas on the right or Scott Duxbury down this uh, near side the County left so it's uh, going to be a, a busy afternoon for the full-backs, one imagines. And, uh, I think that's why Paul Turnbull's been picked to play just in front of that back four, because when they go on those marauding runs down the flanks, he's probably going to be the man who's just got to tuck in at times and make sure there's no counter-attack, as he is doing now with uh, Thomas out of position. But the ball's gone the other way. Duxbury misses his tackle as Wardle squares it now for the chance across the face of goal. John McAtee tried to slide it into the path of Ryan Brook. And he's very fortunate there, Duxbury, that it didn't land at the feet of the top scorer because Ryan Brooks sliding in there, I thought he was going to level the game. That was a real opportunity on the counter-attack. I think you've got to ask more from your number nine there, Ryan Brook, if I'm honest. I think he didn't put as much of himself behind it as he could have done. But he's got to take a gamble there because County were caught napping and a little bit of an inquest going on at the back there about who's at fault and who's to blame. County, like you say, John, since, since going in front, since looking so dominant, surrendered a lot of ground there and just given Curzon a reason to believe Ryan Brook who knows Paul Turnbull well they're standing side by side at the moment they've got a, a coaching business away from uh, away from professional football as uh, Matty Warburton goes on a marauding run plays it out to the flank now for Adam Thomas Thomas taking on McJanet he's got the beating of the fullback gets his cross in and it's turned behind by Wardle who's done well to prevent it going for a corner it's actually gone out for a, a throw in on this near side and uh, I mentioned that coaching business uh, there's also uh, Alex Brown who's uh, part of that, uh, that little company that they've got as well which is doing very well 8 by 8 coaching County throw, left-hand side, deep in the Curzon half. The Hatters lead 1-0 through Ash Palmer's goal. It's Duxbury taking it down to the dead ball line. And he's got a great cross in. It's just a little too high for Elliot Osborne. He's unlucky there. Osborne is unlucky there. Play, though, he's done well to keep it there. And County will build again from the back as he plays it to the goal scorer. Palmer squares it now for Stott on his final appearance for County. His uh, loan is up after today's game. His long diagonal is too long. County win it back, though. Thomas, Palmer, Thomas again on the right-hand side. Mulhern comes short, Thomas still going, finds Mulhern now, lays it off to Warburton. Warburton, he's got three for company, but he, you wouldn't know it, he works the ball brilliantly to Kirby. Kirby down the inside right, crosses to Warburton! His first goal in 13 games, and that has exercised the Demons. Matty Warburton doubles County's lead, 25 minutes gone, it's County 2, Curzon 0. What a relief and a score.
scream from Matty Warburton as he glances in at the near post and puts County two goals in front of Curzon and Ashburn. Like you say, John, his exercise had been in there. It meant so much to him. He's just put his hands on his face and looked to the sky then to say it's over. He's finally got rid of that. He's back amongst the goals and just, at, well, I mean, exactly at the right time moving forward puts more pressure on Chorley, who I'm guessing round about now will hear that County have gone 2-0 up. And Chris, we mentioned it earlier, but goal difference could be crucial. Yep. Matty Warburton, it's his first league goal since the 16th of February, would you believe? His last goal was the 23rd of February against Mason United in the FA Trophy. Wow. And you could see what it meant to him, Chris. Well, it was, it was the celebration that we've seen so many times from him, but it was after that he almost had an, an inner talk with himself he put his, head, his hands over his face just for a few seconds just to kind of soak it all in and remind himself that he is the man around these parts when it comes to getting the important goals it, it's on his shoulders and so just to see him back there was such a cool finish he had a lot to do Jake Kirby's made it easy for him but he still had a, a lot to do and he's just glanced it past the goalkeeper and now you know straight from the kickoff Curzon and Ashton go back to looking a little creaky and all three front players Heavily pressing now on Curzon Ashton. Look at this, they're not going to let them play out from the back at all. Well, it might sound ridiculous, but another five goals and County are top of the league. <laughs> well, you'd have said that before Chester. Absolutely right, who knew we were going to get six in that one? There's uh, centre half Hunt, a little risky back pass, so risky in fact. Oliver Thornley it was, uh, my apologies, uh, it's uh, put that behind for a corner and, and I mean the rattle now Curzon. Oh completely, I mean that, Jake Kirby's just done enough there uh, with his mind games to not allow that one to go, because the, the pass wasn't really going anywhere if we're honest but the defenders thought he could run it out for a corner and Jake's just stayed close enough to not let the defender leave it be and because of that County have got a corner. A massive goal for Maxi Warburton, a massive goal for Stockport County. Uh, that will certainly help to uh, calm the nerves even further. County with a cushion in uh, midway through the first half. The corner's loose inside the box. The shot from Ash Palmer. I think it may have struck the back of Jake Kirby. A combination of Kirby and Thornley inside the six-yard box. And Ash Palmer again very close to scoring his second and County's third. And well, it's Keystone Cops in that Curzon defence every time the corners drop in. Yeah, the cheat Lynch out of ball, I think. It was more likely a county arm than a yeah. Curzon one, but the, the fact remains the same. County are hammering on the door, and that all that's doing is growing in confidence. And like you say, goal difference. Great defending from Jamie Stott under pressure there from Ryan Brook, but he gets the ball away. And now Kirby on the left flank draws the challenge from Joel Senior and wins the throw in. Oh, I like watching Jake Kirby as a player. He's exciting, he gets up and down, he makes goals, he gets in around the box. Such an exciting player to watch and a great one to have fully fit at this part of the season. Here's Mulhern squaring the ball for Thomas. Adam Thomas on the right. Everything to his left now. He's going to take on the fullback again, McJanet. He feels confident in doing so. This time, unfortunately, McJanet plays it off the shins of Adam Thomas. And that will be a throw in to the visitors. Still Blythe winning by a goal to the FC United. Geisley are a goal up at home to Darlington and Boston are one up against Ashton United. It's looking pretty bleak now for Ashton United and FC United who'll be joining Nuneaton in being relegated from the National League North this season if it stays as it is. Here's Matty Warburton again shooting from distance this time blocked by Hunt. It'll spin away off Jonathan Hunt though for a county throw down the Hatter's left flank. County leading by two goals to nil. That's Matty Warburton. There he is. And like you say, if County can get a third, we could have easily got a third from that corner then. If County can get another one now, that lets Chorley know that County are coming back and it's not over yet. Duxbury's cross, it'll come through to Adam Thomas, who drives it over the bar. He had time to pick his spot. He looks disappointed with himself there. It was always rising. It stays 2-0. Yeah, the ball, he's just shot from just behind him. He's had to manoeuvre his body over the ball. And I think he could have taken an extra touch there, but... It's, it's what happens when you get a couple of goals and your confidence is flowing. You do all your attacking players, they do want to take shots and they do want to test the goalkeeper. Adam Thomas will come again and County will, you've got no doubt. Goalkeeper Mason with the clearance. Terrible kick from Mason. Straight out for a, <laughs> for a throw in as a, a fan in the main stand. Heads the ball back to Scott Duxbury. Always a, a good moment. Surprised you can see with that fringe. <laughs> It's a long time since I had a fringe, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> senior, 
clears the ball. Oh, Stott again, dominant in the air. Throwing though to Curzon Ashton. It's a very, very youthful Curzon side, and that youth is uh, going to be tested now. I think just so. spending more hit the post. Came close, no cigar. Here's Thomas down the right hand side, bringing it up towards the halfway line. County leading by two goals to nil, putting pressure on league leaders Chorley. Warburton, Osborne, the challenge on the edge of the box comes in from the busy Chris Rowney, who wins it back. Elliot Osborne not able to keep him at bay. And now they'll look to counter attack. Ryan Brooks on the move through the middle. The ball very slow to arrive from Senior, and when it does, it's down the touchline. And it'll drift out for a goal kick to County. But a Hatters lead, 2-0. That just sums up how the belief has been completely drained from Curzon now. That took a good 10, 15 seconds. Any one of the, the Curzon Aston players, if they had actually tried for that, they could have kept that in play. It was going so slow out of play, but they just they look devoid of any confidence at the moment. And County have got to seize upon that, get a couple of goals, because the more goals go in now, the more pressure goes on Chorley. Like you say, the goal difference is still in Chorley's favour, but it's not completely unreachable. Surely at the start of the day, we're at six goals clear of County. That's down to four now. And that could be crucial during this run in. Still nil nil, by the way, up in the northeast. Spennymore nil, surely nil. But if Spennymore score, County will be back on the top of the table with one to play. It's a crucial afternoon for the Hatters, and County doing everything they can to make sure it goes in their favour and uh, well, regardless of the outcome if they win this one it does go to the final day of the season anyway yeah well, it's, it, it's going to go to the wire I think you have to consider that now Curzon got a man down here but the referee's uh, well, he's allowed play on and then eventually blows up I just don't understand he saw that ages ago either blow up or don't there's just no point letting them play on for a bit. And then no point. he's pointing to his head as if there was a head injury. I've got to stop it. He saw that. He knew that. I don't understand these referees sometimes. Either stop it or don't. And the line has not made any communication with him either. I think, you know, having having said about the referee against Chorley, and County didn't lose the game because of the referee. But the referee didn't do them any favours, giving a free kick out from outside the box when it was clearly a penalty, when blocked Paul Turnbull's run, when... Uh, he's on the ball and County can see from it. You've just got to look at the standard, re standard of refereeing as a whole. And so, more often than not, John, it's just not good enough. That's, uh, Lewis Ward is back on his feet now. The youngster is on loan from Barnsley's under 23s. He's been at uh, Oakwell for 10 of his 20 years. So, uh, a good South Yorkshire lad, born in Barnsley. Versatile right sided midfielder. So just uh, feeling the side of his jaw there. He's okay to continue. It'll be a drop ball. Frank Mulhern is going to send it uh, flying back towards the uh, opposition goal. There's a, a huge uh, inflatable <laughs> drifted onto the pitch on the far side, Chris. <laughs> There's a few people giggling around. I think one of the ball boys is just going to keep hold of it. Oh, he's not, he's let it go. <laughs> um, County just give it back to the keeper in the Curzon Ashton goal. And the inflatable is now off the pitch, but... Oh, uh, he's, he's, he's done the midfield and popped it, that's what the cheer was for. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite clips, Mike Phelan, a yeah. great bloke. One of the best people I've ever met. And uh, Mick Phelan, when he popped that balloon and Alex Ferguson jumped for his life, that was just one of the best <laughs> things I've ever seen. Mulhern surely fouled, yes, as the referee, free kick County. For what it's worth, I don't think Alex Ferguson would agree with you. I want to be his favourite clip. I'm no lip reader, but I, <laughs> I could tell what he said that day. A <laughs> <laughs> spice too, the might, if I remember. Feel him just carried on laughing even afterwards <laughs> <laughs> to get the, uh, the roller kick. Short free kick from Walker to stop. Down the line now for Kirby. Kirby holds it up, but uh, he's been bullied out of it. By uh, Luke Merrill. He's done well there, the 18 year old against uh, the experienced Kirby. Wins the ball back and now McJanet's away down the left hand side. He's got Luke Wall ahead of him. Forced inside though by the hard working Osborne. 
and Curzon start again from the halfway line. Merrill all the way back to centre half. Thornley. Thornley bringing it forward now for the visitors. Down the left side, Janet, the fullback, sent off against County last time these sides met. Here's Brooke, might fancy his chances here from distance, didn't get hold of it. And the lad from Holmes Chapel fires way wide of the target. Jim Gann will be pleased with that, Chris, because what that all means is that County defending so resolutely and so well on that 18-yard line that Curzon Ashton have been uh, reduced to shooting from distance and hoping for the best. Yeah, I think they, they do look half decent, Curzon, at times. When they get the ball and move it around, they've got the makings of a good side here. The fact that they're not going down this season will, will give them confidence. And next season, I think they could be maybe one to watch, but you can tell our experience level isn't of that where Stockport Counties is. It, you know, they are lacking uh, a few qualities that the men in blue might have and that will play well for County today but Curzon so far OK the 2-0 down but they've not embarrassed themselves well, 37 minutes gone here on Imagine in association with mydigitalaccounts.com the Hatters lead by two goals to nil they took the lead after five minutes through Ash Palmer and then a, an important goal that could prove to be midway through that first half the strike from uh, Matty Warburton, his first goal in uh, 13 games, putting the Hatters two goals to the good. You can sense, we were speaking before the game about the, the energy around Edgley Park and the positivity and the play, the, 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 the fans speaking how proud they were of the players, even though the job wasn't done yet. I get the impression that feeling is still there, but it is a lot more relaxed now. If it isn't to be, it isn't to be. If Charlie go on and win, then fair enough but County are doing their bit and I think that's that's been appreciated about SK3 at the moment Jim Gannon they'll be very anxious that County keep up the tempo they keep up the pressure and go in search of more goals because goal difference going into that final game at Nuneaton could be absolutely critical still oh big time I think County have got to if, if it is still all to play for and it is in the it could go down to goal difference Camp County have got to be They've got to be. They've got to play the Billy Big Boy about yeah, it. They've, they've got, got to, to go better. there looking for a big win. Yeah, exactly. They, they've got to go and say if, if five nil is what's needed, then we've got to go and get five nil. We've got to get six. It's Osborne. It's opened up for County's number seven. His shot from distance ricochets off the back of Chris Rowney, and it's cleared by McJanet. Turnbull. Can he just fire this one back in. He's just opted to put his foot on it and tries to play it to Osborne, but he telegraphed the pass and that allows Rowney to steal up towards the. The number nine, Ryan Brook, didn't really hold it up well enough that time though. And it's back with Ben Hinchliffe now at the other end. We've got about uh, six and a half, seven minutes to go to the break. Look how quickly Curzon Ashton retreat when Ben Hinchliffe gets the ball. No chance of a high presser and then they want to get back up and uh, set yeah. up shot. It's allowing County to play out from the back, isn't it? And that's what they've done, exactly. Here's Mulhern down the right wing, he's got McJanet between him and the penalty area, McJanet with the tackle, it's a county throw, down the Hatter's right flank, still nil-nil up at uh, Spennymore, where Chorley, the league leaders, are playing today, but they're league leaders at the moment by virtue purely of goal difference. Across from Adam Thomas is blocked by McJanet, and County have their fifth corner of the day. Well, the corners from County so far this afternoon, Chris Ridgway, have been causing havoc. They have, and uh, if County can get a third before half-time, which I know, I don't think it's an unrealistic question at the moment. And um, then that goal difference just shaved down a little bit more. And it was six at the start of the day. Well, if you can get another one, it's down by three by half time. Then it puts you in a much better spot. Uh, by the end of the day, by next week, you've just got to keep chipping away. Still nil-nil. I put Spenny Moore. We'll keep you up to date with that one as Sam Walker takes this corner towards Mulhern on the near post. He couldn't flick it in. The defender still hasn't got it clear. McJanet now does have the chance to bring it out and he's won himself a goal kick off the shins of Adam Thomas. It remains County 2, Curzon Ashton 0. I think Frank Mulhern was looking to turn inwards then, try and get a shot away when I think had he just looked up, albeit easier said than done, uh, when you're surrounded by opposition defenders, there were a couple of options. Matthew Walton just letting him know that he was available as one of them. Um, but County, like you say, they keep the pressure up again. It's dropped down in the mix, so again they've had uh, an opportunity from it. So these corners are, are working so far. Long clearance from Mason, the header from Sam Walker off the side of his head into touch in front of the home dugout. That will be a throw in to the Nash, senior to take, the former FC United man. County hunting in packs to win it back, and the counter attack is on for County. 
Mulhern plays it out to the left side of the box for Matty Warburton who gets it onto his right foot. He can't shoot from there but he's got a chance to find Turnbull into the path of Thomas. Thomas wide right now, Turnbull still in support. Turnbull will cross from the corner of the box looking for the far post, the header into the area now for Mulhern who will tee it up for Walker to drive it. What a brave block that is by Chris Rowney. County coming close to a third, they've got a corner courtesy of Walker. I like this Chris Rowley, I think he's... Uh He's playing well at the moment in what's a difficult condition for him and his team. But County looks scintillating there. And it was just down here in front of us where they won the, wall, uh, won, the wall, won the ball back. I was most impressed. Jake Kirby, Matty Warburton just teaming up. Elliot Osborne getting in on it as well. These are the players that you're going to have to rely on. And so far they're delivering the goods. Yeah, Chris Rowney did well. Former Oldham Athletic man. He's been with Curzon for over six years now. Corner to be taken by Sam Walker again. Four to go to the break. Walker takes the header from Stott, blocked by the defender. It was actually uh, Ryan Brook back there to help out his uh, back line. But now the counter attacks on for Curzon Ashton. But look at Ben Hinchliff. That would have been a clear one on one for Lewis Ward. But Hinchliff's starting position so good, he's able to run half the length of the pitch to clear the ball and put it out back into the Curzon half. That's Meanwhile, silly. Scott Duxbury has committed a, a needless foul here on uh, number 10, John McAtee, the striker on loan from Shrewsbury. The referee might be reaching for a card here, Chris, will he? Um, I think he's going to no, give him a very yet. stern word. What happened, John McAtee, in the midst of that uh, incredible Ben Hinchley clearance, John McAtee with a sublime piece of skill, rather embarrassed for um, Scott Duxbury uh, in front of the main stand, and I, I think Scott didn't take too kindly to it, just ran and shunted him straight in the back. Now, I heard a few counter fans around and say it's a shoulder. It doesn't count if it's a shoulder straight down the middle of the back, I'm afraid. Uh, and Scott just uh, getting a bit wound up there. Yeah, he's only 19. McAtee on loan from Shrewsbury, former Burnley man. Here's Ryan Brook chasing down the, the ball on the right flank. Stott, well, That's he silly. shepherded that out deliberately because he thought it was going to go for a goal kick. But it actually, I, I think he's wrong. It did come off him last and he's conceded a corner that he didn't need to let go. Yeah, no, and I think he knows that. It quite clearly hit him in the face, so uh, he definitely didn't miss yeah. it. Um, he Two to go to the break. Three, it's 2-0 to the Hatters. And they've got a corner to defend now at the Cheadle end. There won't be much added time. This is an in-swinging corner for County to defend. Into the flurry of bodies and Ben Hinchley with a very good fist to get it clear. And now the counter-attack's on for the Hatters, it's 3v3 as County break. Matty Warburton leading the charge, not the best of balls to Kirby, but Kirby stroked it back out to the other side for Osborne. Osborne taking on Senior, it's Osborne and it's wide. Wow, what a break from County though. And the shot from Osborne not too far away, Jim Gannon applauding his players. Breathtaking football. Uh, and we said just a moment ago it's Osborne, Warburton and Kirby. They're the men you rely on. They, it was those three who led the charge there. Jake Kirby, his pace is frightening. Uh, he, when you consider how much time he spent out injured, the fact that he's still got that turn of pace, he's absolutely electric. I cannot wait to see him have a full season. Brilliant break, 3v3, but uh, Elliot Osborne, very unlucky. His shot just drifting wide of the near post as he shot from 18 yards out. Here's Stott now, right-footed, to volley it forward for Mulhern to chase. Mulhern, not a lot of football in recent weeks. Niall Bell's been the preferred choice at number nine, but he's got the nod today. Up alongside Kirby, that's a poor clearance by Mason, the goalkeeper. That's a foul by Merrill on uh, Jake Kirby. It's a free kick to the Hatters. We're in the final minute of the first half. Midway inside the Curzon half, the Hatters have a free kick. Jim Gannon urging one or two forward, not too many. It's Jamie Stock to uh, take up a position here though to play it short to Walker to change the angle of attack Walker into feet for Kirby Kirby's got support from Duxbury will cross first time it's Mulhern he's onside there's no flag as he lays it off to the edge of the box for Turnbull saved by the legs of the goalkeeper it's a good save in the end by Cameron Mason Turnbull denied but County will come again 
it's Osborne down the right hand side of the penalty area twisting and turning to get away from McJanet there are two added minutes at the end of this first half Warburton clips it into the box and it's cleared by the number seven Lewis Wardle up to halfway the Hatters so unlucky not to be three in front what a good save that is the keeper has seen it so late okay he's not had much movement to do it's quite close but to get down that quickly uh, it's actually his leg that made the save I, I was expecting Paul Turnbull to wheel away in celebration what a very very good save to keep Curzon just about in this game so into the two added minutes at the end of this first half County playing the ball out from the back with Jamie Stott it's one way traffic well County answering any critics from Saturday uh, and then some with, an, uh, with a performance here kicking towards the Cheadle end in the second half with the wind at their backs you might fancy them to go on and claim even more goals all we can pray for now is for Spennymore to do the Hatters a huge huge favour and uh, didn't the uh, the Chorley Express that has been uh, riding high all season they've not been outside the top two since the opening week of the campaign here's Duxbury down the left hand side taking on two defenders he draws the challenge from senior it comes out to Sam Walker though Walker back to Duxbury Duxbury holding off the challenge again finding Elliot Osborne it's a great turn from Osborne on the edge of the box was he tripped inside the area the referee had a good look at it Osborne went to ground and the referee shakes his head he might have been better staying on his feet Jim Gannon is agreeing with Elliot Osborne though he thinks it should have been a penalty it absolutely was a penalty I, I, just, I can't believe the referee's not seen that given his position of where he was um, he's just taking a kick in the ankle there I think has he not given it because he's just about to blow the half time whistle I'm not sure they, uh, the, the lads on the pitch there was four county players around the ball ready for kick off I think Elliot Osborne by the way is still having a word with him about that penalty appeal at the end of the first half in stoppage time well he had every right to be aggrieved uh, he's, he's actually pointing to the Curzon Ashton number nine saying that's where he kicked he's ripped my sock <laughs> um, how that's not been given as a penalty I, it's beyond me and I'm glad it's not a, a, a decision like it was on Saturday where it was nil-nil and that could have changed the game uh, completely we're ready for kickoff. second half it's County who get us underway kicking from left to right now and straight from the kickoff. unfortunately a waste of possession as the ball to Adam Thomas was uh, fizzed in front of him has gone out for a Curzon Ashton throw now the Nash kicking from right to left towards the railway end the Hatters kicking towards the Cheadle end and what an attendance for today's game 6,001 the attendance today with 75 visiting fans as Warburton tries to run through it's cleared by centre-half Thornley the blonde-haired centre-back who's a, a useful prospect come through the ranks at uh, the Tameside Stadium still only 20 years of age throw in county Thomas takes gets it back from Warburton but then can't control it the pitch is a little bit lively, but no real excuse for that. I think Matty Warburton is just showing. Turnbull, he's just taken that right on the side of the face, but he's, he's won the ball back for County very bravely, and the Hatters are on the charge. It's Warburton to strike from distance on his left foot. Never really got hold of it, but it stays 2-0 to count. Matty Warburton has come out of this second half like the last 10 games didn't happen. Uh, he's come out, he's laughing and joking with his teammates. He's he's just had a run on the defender there and just kicked it too far in front of him uh, and as soon as the ball went out of play he was joking with Jake Kirby and Frank Mulhern about it which is the sign of a player who's enjoying himself and a happy player is a dangerous one. Oh, but that's a poor mistake by Stoss as he dived through there it could set up an opportunity here for McAtee McAtee inside the box but Stotts recovered well to get goal side and shepherds the ball back to Ben Hinchler who just uh, loses his footing as he slices that clearance out towards the left wing one or two little mistakes creeping into County's performance now. Yeah, I think it is a little bit of complacency, if I'm honest. Maybe not so much from Ben Hinchliffe, but certainly from Frank Mulhern and, and Adam Thomas just taking their eye off the ball. Maybe it's giddiness because uh, they sent more goals. Maybe it's the occasion, the last home game of the season proper with 45 minutes, well, now less than 45 minutes to go, and they're still in the hunt for the league title. This is almost definitely now, you would say, going to go down to the last day. But Chorley and County currently both locked on 79 points at the top of the table in the live league table. Only goal difference is uh, putting Chorley in front. Here's uh, Osborne down the right wing at the Cheadle end, finding Mulhern. His cross is deflected away from the penalty area, but County still have it with Sam with uh, Scott Duxbury. 
Duxbury's going to go for goal here. And it hits the fullback and comes to Mulhern. Brave goalkeeping by Mason. He makes the block. Mulhern denied and it stays 2-0 to the Hatters. I actually thought there was two playing for handball there myself. Uh, Speedland didn't agree with me, so I'm inclined to think that maybe I didn't see it correctly. But County looking very good again and again, sensing that there's more goals to be had in this one. Thomas down the right, Osborne immediately challenged by McJanet, the left back. It comes over to the near side for a County throw in again. Adam Thomas is on throw in duties down this near touchline because he's playing at right back today. Finds Mulhern who tries to help it on into the path of Osborne. Osborne absolutely terrorising centre half Thornley who needlessly puts it behind for another County corner. Number seven for the Hatters. Just making them feel uncomfortable. This is what Chorley did to County on Saturday, not letting them settle. We can see that Curzon. They've got ability in terms of moving the ball around. The defenders look composed, but if you unsettle them, they don't like it. And they've just shown that he's just planted it into the T length when he didn't really need to, the defender. The 6,000 making plenty of noise inside Edgeley Park this afternoon as Sam Walker takes the corner. It straightens the arms of Mason, who opts to punch yet again. Warburton couldn't quite keep it alive for County. And the Hatters now have to retreat into their own half with Scott Duxbury under pressure here from... Uh, the number 10 on the far side, McAtee, but you wouldn't know he was under pressure. Deals with it very calmly and coolly. Hinchley playing out from the back, finds Adam Thomas. Thomas chips it forward. A little too high for Mulhern, but it comes off the back of McJanet's head. And again, Thornley, he's terrorised by the county front line. And again, he needlessly concedes a corner. Yeah, he's done it again. He doesn't need to do that. But county now, they've identified a weak part in the chain at the back of uh, Curzon Ashton there. Might be a short corner this time. They've certainly drawn two defenders out of the area as Osborne stands next to Sam Walker as he prepares to take this left-footed corner, normally be an in-swinger. Will he whip it in? Will he keep it tight in that corner? He's going to drill it into the box. It's well defended by Chorley on the near post. And the counter-attack is on, and it's three Chorley players against two blue shirts. Oh, but they've not made the most of it. Duxbury did enough. And then Thomas won it back, and now the counter-attack is at the other end. Mulhern's played it in early, he's played it in too early, and it's too close to the goalkeeper, and it stays 2-0 to County, but the Hatters almost outnumbered at the other end for a moment there. Right idea from Frank Mulhern, they've just got to stay switched on in the middle, though. Brilliant defending from Scott Duxbury, did his job uh, down to a tee there, and then County broke in the right way. I think Frank Mulhern did the right thing, just didn't quite get his coordinates set on his pass. Just put it too close to the goalkeeper, but positive stuff from the men in blue. Here's the number three, McJanet, playing it forward, but again, Ash Palmer's there to defend his 18-yard line. Thomas helps it on. Complete miscue from Rowney on his weaker left foot, puts it out for a throw-in on this near side. Curzon Ashton, it's been a terrific meteoric rise for them from the Northern Counties to the National League North, and they've held on in there for four years. They've got another year to come, certainly. So at the moment, they're really under the cosh here. County looking to build on that 2-0 half-time advantage. Osborne, Thomas on the outside, used him as a decoy, comes inside, finds Turnbull, midway inside the opposition half, plays it out to the left now for Scott Duxbury. Duxbury, will he take on his man Wardle? He's trying to go the long way around, gets his cross in, it's deflected, off Wardle, and behind, County, corner number nine. Yeah, really, really impressive stuff from Elliot Osborne, fast feet, using Adam Thomas as a decoy. Looks one way, sends his man the other. Brilliant play from Elliot Osborne. That's what he's got in his locker. That's what he's capable of doing. Pings it across to Scott Duxbury. He just shows his man that he's got a turn of pace as well. Wins a corner. Stockport County looks so good here. Paul Turnbull, it was his corner that led to the opening goal of the day. Can this one lead to the opening goal of the half? County, 2-0 in front. As Turnbull lines this one up. Whips it towards Palmer, but it was just too high. He's over-egged it and it's gone out for a throw-in on the opposite touchline. Curzon survive and it stays County 2, Curzon Ashton nil here on Imagine in association with MyDigitalAccounts.com and what an attendance for this final day encounter between the two near neighbours. Just 75 fans making the trip from Ashton but almost uh, 6,000 County fans swelling the gate to 6,001 today. Quite remarkable tally. Thomas challenged by Rowney, it's a throw into the Hatters, deep inside the Curzon Ashton half. County knowing that it's only goals at the moment that's keeping them off the top. They've got to go in search of more. 
Mulhern, little flick with the back of the heel there, didn't quite come off and Rowley's cleared it, Thornley's hurt though, I think uh, the studs of Frank Mulhern's boot may have just caught him there, here come County again though with Duxbury firing one in, it's clicked the top of the crossbar, I'm not sure what he was trying to do from there, but there was a lot of uh, zip on it, which makes me think he probably has gone for goal, it's yeah. hit the bar and it stays 2-0. Well I think everybody was anticipating the cross, uh, so so much so the keeper strayed a little off his line he's shown a couple of little naiveties this curves an Ashton goalkeeper this afternoon and that was possibly one of them uh, Scott Duxbury if that goes in blimey another goal of the season contender he scored with a few crosses during his time hasn't yeah. he? <laughs> <laughs> County 2 curves and Ashton nil. at Spennymoor it's still goalless oh, uh, surely a playing today Kirby drifts past senior as if he's not there and then crosses it too far in front of Matty Warburton. Goal kick to Curzon Ashton. I think it was a slight attempt for a corner there, but what a what a turn of pace. Jay Kirby for me, one of the most exciting players we've got to watch. You know, he's, he's going to develop into a hell of a player there at County, I'm sure, under Jim Gannon's future. This is the kind of perfect, positive atmosphere that Jim Gannon must have been dreaming of last night and have wanted his players to come out into a cauldron of noise but not to feel the heat and the pressure that perhaps they felt on Saturday and it certainly has been that way the fans have played a massive part this afternoon in creating exactly the right conditions for County to go out and express themselves they lead 2-0 it's still 0-0 up in the northeast between Spennymoor and Chorley it's looking really black though this afternoon for FC United and Ashton United they're uh, both uh, poised to be relegated this afternoon because Geisley are still a goal to the good at home to Darlington they just need a, a win to make certain of their place in the National League North next season and avoid a second successive relegation the ball cleared by Kirby too far in front of Mulhern this time but it's bounced awkwardly for the goalkeeper Mason and the oohs and ahs and the home fans Mason has a little laugh with the cheat lens it bounces wide of the goal and uh, the, home, the uh, visitors rather are going to make a change they're bringing on a pacey attacking player right winger Sean Miller who's uh, just signed a new one year contract is about to come on for Curzon Ashton it's the, the Nash on the ball at the moment with left back Cam McJanet he's on a season long loan from Stokes under 23s giving the ball away to former Stoke City man Adam Thomas there though will be a throw in to the Hatters it's going to be Luke Wall who makes way here and it's a straight swap. I think County uh, are in a good place at the moment. It's easy to say when you're 2 0 up, but they're pinging the ball around at will. They're stretching the Curzon Ashton team. They're playing high balls, low balls. And in some, games, in some games, you can't get away with that. Saturday was one of them. But when it's a pitch that you know and you trust, then it's an environment that you're familiar with. You can move the ball around in, in much more comfortable settings. And County are doing that. And it's allowing Matty Warburton and Elliot Osborne. Jake Kirby, Frank Muller, it's allowing them to excel and Paul Turnbull and Sam Walker we find ourselves not saying their names all too often but they're just pulling the strings behind them and getting on with it Sean Miller, the substitute by the way, a former teammate of Paul Turnbull's, they were together at Chester last season so County just uh, losing possession there, needlessly conceding a throw in on this uh, near side Sean Miller actually joined Chester under uh, Neil Young, the former county manager, and has scored against County before. He had a spell at Altrincham, and he scored in that 3-2 uh, win for uh, Altrincham at Moss Lane back in 2016. County on the ball here with Thomas. Turnbull takes over, but he can't clear the head of Chris Rowney. And now Ash Palmer's in a bit of trouble. Jamie Stott mops up in, uh, in his place. He didn't realise, I think, that uh, Brook was right behind him. But uh, Hinchliffe comes off his line well, gathers that one safely. Now a long one for Mulhern to chase. Thornley, the defender, has missed it. Mulhern has got himself a corner. Corner number 10 for County. Yeah, I think uh, the lady in the field line has just taken that right in the face. He's just gone quickly down the side. But County applying more pressure on Curzon, and that's how quickly they can do it. When the ball is put into Frank Mulhern like that, Curzon Ashton simply don't know how to deal with him and anywhere will do it uh, and every time so far this half he's been punted into the cheat lane in the corner for County. Sun has come out again, sun shining on Edgley Park as Walker takes the corner. County will hope it will be raining goals before the end of this one though. <laughs> That's horrible. Here's Warburton looking to add to County's two from the first half. 
Palmer. <laughs> a little dummy through the legs and then tried to chase it down the other side, but Cam Mason gets there just ahead of him. The goalkeeper, 23 years of age, who came through the ranks at Chesterfield in his second spell with uh, Kurz and Ashton, was uh, re-signed to replace Hakan Burton after he left the club. At the other end, Ben Hinchliffe fires the ball upfield towards Elliot Osborne. It's too high, though, for County's wide man. Jim Gallen just urging his players on here, wants a little bit more from them. He'd like a few more goals as we approach the hour mark. It's still 2-0 to the Hatters here on Imagine, in association with MyDigitalAccounts.com. It's a county throw-in inside county territory, down the Hatters' right flank. Well, every goal really is crucial now. And uh, the more pressure County can keep on Curzon, the more they can get another one just to get that six down. It's now at four, get it down to three, because uh, as it stands, as you say, John, it's only goals keeping up the, the difference. And spending, spending more surely could well end up nil-nil. Great to see County uh, supporter Christian Mahofsky here today. Probably the longest journey any season ticket holder ever has to make. He travels from the, uh, the lovely village of Benavise, just above the, uh, the Costa del Sol there, just in the hills above Marbella. He's made the trip to uh, be with us here today. Uh, Dad will be a, a pint or two with him after the game today. Hopefully cheering a successful afternoon for the Hatters, who still lead here by two goals to nil as we approach the hour mark at Edgley Park. Now Jim Gannon would dearly love to see his side rattle in another couple of goals, though, in what has been a very one-sided fixture so far. Here's Ashton. You can tell the, uh, the new man, Mark Bradshaw, is determined his players are not just here to make up the numbers for a county celebration he wants to try and stifle as much as he can but you do get the feeling Chris a third goal would kill them off whilst it stays 2-0 they've always got that little chance well I think County are going to look for a little bit more life up front Barry Stevenson's going to come on in a moment for Jake Kirby he'd and fancy uh, his chances wouldn't he I think against, yeah. against these and I, I think that's that's probably a good move Jake Kirby's come in he's you know he's not had a lot of minutes in recent weeks and months at County whereas Barry Stevenson has uh, so Darren Stevenson can get his, his run in the sun and uh, Jake Kirby can, uh, can say that was a good hour for me. Hunt heads the ball clear but straight to his opposite number Paul Turnbull but then Elliot Osborne caught in possession as Palmer's got to make up the ground and he's done it very very well and what an excellent back pass on his left side there to turn it back to Ben Hinchliffe. Hinchliffe now looking at the options at the sun right his eyes in the second half the shade is at the other end at the Cheadle end Thornley now facing his own goal, he looks like a rabbit caught in the headlights every time he gets turned, every time he's facing that Cheadle end he looks petrified and on that occasion he puts it out for a throw-in. County meanwhile keen to make a change, with an hour gone Jake Kirby's game is over, Darren Stevenson's coming on. It's, uh, it's like a man who doesn't feel comfortable every single time, he just doesn't, he doesn't like he wants to be there, when, when the ball's coming down to him, if you look at one of the more confident Stockport County players for example, they're not worried about where their opposite number is. They know what the plan is to do with the ball. They know where to put it, where it's going. Listen to this reception for Jake Kirby, by the way. Kirby, who's uh, been out recently with a, a chest injury. Recently with a, a check. And uh, again, one former Tranmere man replaces another. Uh, Stevenson this time comes on for Kirby. It was the other way around on Saturday. But the, the Curzon Ashton at the back, when they get the ball coming to them, the first thought is... How much time have I got? I don't even know where they're popping up from at the moment. And Dan Stevenson, he'd love to sign the season after the goal in front of the Chiedland. 61 and a half minutes gone. Here is Stevenson, first touch, holds it up, plays it back out to the right wing for Adam Thomas to clip it in, blocked by Rowney. It's a throw in this time to the Hatters. They can't uh, increase the 10 corners they've won already. Just a throw in, right down by the corner flag on the Hatters' right wing as they kick towards the Chiedland from left to right as we look at it. Thomas. To Matty Warburton, who whips the ball in at real pace. It's a great cross from Warburton, well defended by Jonathan Hunt, the uh, long serving centre half. Age 31 now, captain of this uh, Curzon Ashton side. Free kick to the Hatters, halfway line, foul by Brook. Darren Stevenson inches away there from latching onto Matty Warburton. Imagine that. Almost as quick as Bowen Dixon's goal last season when he came on as a substitute. Well, he's playing right up top alongside Frank Mulhern. Warburton staying in the hole behind him. Poor pass down the line by Adam Thomas. Jim Gannon will be going even greyer now. 
<laughs> he uh, puts his head in his hands at that uh, misplaced pass. It's unusual. Adam Thomas, we've seen him a couple of times today, just lose focus. He's uh, one of the most consistent players for County. He's playing at right back today, of course. So an unfamiliar position, but not a, a regular put for him. Here's Mulhern, forced wide by Thornley. It's a throw in to, to uh, Curzon. He's a little unlucky there, Frank Mulhern. It bounced yeah. off the inside of his thigh and went out for a throw. Curzon just looking to kill a few seconds every chance to get, not because they're winning. I don't think they want any more. The game is a little flat at the moment, but they're making mistakes at the back here, the Nash, and that's a terrible crossfield ball, which has gone straight out for a county throw. Duxbury gets it back from Sam Walker, takes it down the line now, running at the winger, finding Stevenson, who's got a chance to cross now, but Hunt's there to cut out the danger. He's going to dribble this one out of his uh, penalty area, charged down though by Darren Stevenson, it'll be another throw in to the visitors, but uh, deep in their own half. Elsewhere, up in the northeast, still Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. Kidderminster now 2 1 down at Southport, so their uh, hopes of the playoffs are uh, the faint hopes already are probably extinguished today. Leamington 3 up against basement club Nuneaton now. Oh, here's Turnbull. It's opened up for Paul Turnbull, edge of the box, but he was always stretching to reach that one. County still have it with Adam Thomas, but we're back on the halfway line now. Palmer to Warburton, wide right, everything to his left, he comes inside, Warburton, pass one, he was pulled back then, clumsy tap challenge from Ryan Brook, a centre forwards challenge on Matty Warburton, and what an opportunity now for County to get the ball into the Curzon Ashton penalty area. Unsurprisingly, one man who's just walked the width of the pitch to get there is Sam Walker, he'll fancy this with his left foot, uh, a little 10-15 uh, yards further forward, uh, from his goal against Spennymore a few weeks ago but it's one of these where he can drift it in if he can make it bounce anywhere in between the penalty spot and the six yard box it just makes all kinds of problems for the Curzon Aston back line that's exactly what he'd be hoping to do so Sam Walker left footed in swinger it's whipped in at pace it's uh, one in the air by Hunt but then not cleared but the referee has already blown for a foul so it's a free kick to the uh, visitors. Must just mention the ball boys today. They're all players from the Stockport County Pro Football Academy. Hoping to uh, enjoy their afternoon here at Edgley Park. The players at the academy, of course, train on a, a daily basis and they're also studying for a BTEC Level 3. And they're uh, well known to manage Jim Gannon, of course, because uh, he uh, also manages the under 19s Youth Alliance team. There's also an under 19 team in the Colleges League and an under 18 team in the Northwest Youth Alliance. So uh, well done to Alan Moore and all the guys for coming supporting the first team here this afternoon. It's County on the front foot once again. The game still a little flat, Chris. It needs a spark, doesn't it? And County, they've got to throw in down the right flank now. Yeah, I've just seen Jason Gilchrist warming up down there. You well, that would be the spark. Is it? he going to be that? Yeah, is he going to provide that? Because at the moment, County, they are getting a lot of balls into the box, but they're not getting a great deal of success. Mulhern was on his knees then, but he's picked himself up to get a shot in. And Stevenson, from five yards out, has missed a simple, simple chance. Well, I was talking to him on Saturday about the miss of Matty Warburton's, and Darren C Stevenson, as you might expect, was so sympathetic towards Matty. And uh, Matty Warburton was the first to run to Stevenson then to say chin up. That was an equally shocking miss. What a chance to make it three. I mean, Matty Warburton might have said the pitch was a bit lively and it bobbled before he hit it on Saturday. I don't think there was any excuses there. That was rolling perfectly for him. He's just taken his eye off the ball. Well, it's right in the middle of the goal as well, wasn't it? No excuse at all. And Darren Stevenson will be kicking himself for that one. And we said it's, it needs something, it needs a spark. And that would have provided it a third goal at the Cheadle end. Turnbull's struggling at the moment, by the way. Well, he's just he's just taken a right whack. I'm surprised the referee's given a throw in here because that's gone right right across the back of his ankle. The and Aston attempt to win the ball. That should be a county free kick, really. Lumping very heavily. His uh, play's going on. That's a clumsy tackle by Ash Palmer. The striker's going nowhere, heading towards the corner flag on the left wing. And Ash Palmer's just bundled into Ryan Brook, sent him flying. And uh, it's just invited pressure now. Free kick to uh, Curzon Ashton. It was a tense old game out there. 
any other week of the season you'd expect Baron Stevenson to put that away County to be coasting but because of what's on the line and because of another game 100 miles away it's just it, not that easy here's the free kick Turnbull <laughs> nothing wrong with his head as he dives and stoops to nod that clear it's piled back in by Senior good shout from Hinchliff now looks to deliver early he's miscued that completely shanked it up to the centre circle Hunt plays it back where it came from good control from the number 10 John McAtee on loan from Shrewsbury He's got support here from the substitute Miller not seen much of him so far that's a nice cross field ball though to find Senior the right back Senior or oh, Merrill <laughs> ran the wrong way then but he manages to pick it up at the second time of asking but County have a throw in now just in front of those 70 odd travelling Curzon Ashton fans as you say Jason Gilchrist with quarter of the game to go Chris that would be a good introduction now wouldn't it oh, as I say you're looking for a spark and lift the fans wouldn't it uh, it definitely would raise uh, the roof a little bit and I think it would also indicate a change in formation speaking to a couple of people around the club this week the feeling is he works better in a two than a one and Frank Mulhern's leading the line at the moment with those three behind him would you see Darren Stevenson push up maybe well. Oh, and he's nicked the ball, Stevenson. This is the chance County have waited for. It's on a plate for Mulhern, is it? No, the goalkeeper dives down to deny him. Well, he's gone to play it to Mulhern, but he could have cut it back to Matty Warburton, who was arriving on the edge of the six-yard box. There were so many options for Stevenson, and he probably picked the wrong one. Could have done anything he wanted there. He could have had the shot. He could have, uh, he could have squared it to Frank Mulhern. Just the keeper was already down. The keeper was already committed when um, Frank, when um, Darren played that pass. He's just got to get up to speed with the game, Darren Stevenson. But Curzon made it easy for him now. To be fair, he, he created the chance himself, didn't he? There has been, you're right, Chris. There has been a slight change in that formation. It's back to what we've been watching really for most of the season. It's, it looks now like a 4 2 3 1, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, albeit that the one is is fluid. Frank is able to drop it. Darren or Matty breakthrough, but Frank is ultimately the number nine there to lead the line. Yes. And uh, I don't think that's a role that Jason Gilchrist is really used to. Um, not, you know, not familiar too much with FC United or Southport formations over the years, but looking at Sam Walker's much more withdrawn now. He's gone in alongside Paul Turnbull. Stevenson's wide on that left side, with Osborne wide on the right. Mulhern still through the middle, and Matty Warburton behind him. Paul Turnbull seems to have shaken off that yeah. kick to his foot. Jordan Keane was hopeful, I think, warming up down the side there. He's 20 no. to play, the county leading 2 0. Here is Darren Stevenson. That's a great first touch from Stevenson. Well he's there, drawn the challenge from Hunt and he's won a throw in down the Hatter's right flank, level with the 18 yard line of the opposition penalty area. Thomas to take the throw. Stevenson's come over to this near side now, the county right just to get involved from this throw-in, but it's Warburton who's picked out by Thomas, who then takes it down towards the byline. It's a foul, though, by Adam Thomas in the back of John McAtee, who just stepped across in front of Thomas there, draws the foul from County's fullback, and it is a uh, free kick to Curzon Ashton. 19 to play here on Imagine, in association with mydigitalaccounts.com. It remains County 2, Curzon 0. It's a funny old game, isn't it? 2-0 up at home in the final game of the season at home. Uh, well, proper anyway, in, in the sunshine. You'd expect it to be a little bit of a party atmosphere. Think people enjoy themselves, but it's more uneasy now. County, Kills and Ashton have given County no real reason to panic, but it's just frustration on County's side. But goal difference you know, could very well come down to goal difference next weekend, and County could have had three or four today. I did fancy uh, look, they've switched wings now haven't they Osborne's gone to the left Stevenson to the right but here's Mulhern fed by Warburton riding the challenges but in the end he runs into Jonathan Hunt who's very very solid at the back for the Nash and he's done well that's a foul by Walker now on the halfway line free kick to Curzon bit of frustration around Edgley Park at the moment County could do with more goals but they're running out of time 18 to play and it's still 2-0 to County I wanted to see a bit more aggression from Darren Stevenson then the ball fell to him but at the moment it's just not clicking up front for County they're, defensively they're, they're strong enough at the back the fans are doing their bit still 0-0 in the North East I think uh, the fans are calling for Gilchrist 
Here's Osborne out to the right wing now for Stevenson. Stevenson runs into McJanet, then brings him down. Stupid. Needless from Stevenson. Struggling to get into the game since coming off the bench to replace Jake Kirby. I don't know what he thought he was doing there, Darren Stevenson. I certainly don't know what he's protesting at. He looks unplayable in recent weeks. But back, he's nowhere near the power required on the ball. If you're going to do the send it one way and go the other, it's got to be a bit of pace on it to actually get round them on. County 2, Curzon, Ashton, nil. Both goals in the opening 25 minutes of this one. So uh, no goals since then. A bit of frustration around Edgley Park, given that its only goal difference at the moment is keeping County off top spot. Throw into the Nash on this near side. I think a goal would just... Yeah. You, you feel the release, I think. If County can get another goal now, you'll feel the... The outpour of emotion from the Tiedelen. Throw in, McJanet up towards the centre forward Brook. County win it back though. Matty Warburton, ironic cheers as he draws a foul from Rowley. Free kick to County. Matty Warburton, of course, uh, playing against his former club, had two spells with Kurz and Ashton. But uh, left there in the summer of 2017, having scored 13 goals in just 16 appearances to make the move to uh, Edgley Park and what a move it's proved to be the 10 weeks announced that's, uh, over 6,000 are you the one Chris? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask John <laughs> <laughs> so, no, what a fantastic home gate that's 6,001 packed into uh, Edgley Park the uh, third highest gate this season. There were two higher, of course, uh, last season, uh, last uh, month against uh, Spennymoor and Fylde, but it is the second highest league attendance this season. Remarkable support, county support just been growing and growing as the belief that there might be something special happening in SK3 has also been growing. Here's Matty Warburton glancing the ball on to Mulhern who holds it up nicely. Has support from Osborne coming in off the left. He plays a lovely reverse pass then to Mulhern who's inside the area. Mulhern, the goalkeeper, bats it away. Stevenson couldn't get there. Turnbull does. Takes it away then from Sam Walker who was just about to pull the trigger and the move breaks down completely. My word. Can't count it. It's just that final, final kick isn't working. I can't. Paul Turnbull, you hear the frustration from the teal end. He took it off Sam Walker's boot while he was mid-swing. Uh, the two of them just have a quick word there, and it's all handshakes, but County there. Frank Mulhern had it in the area with uh, Osborne and Stevenson ready to go. It's fallen for Sam Walker. County their own undoing there. It could all come down to goal difference. County have to keep hunting. They have to keep going for more goals. Just wonder how long Jim Gannon's going to wait. He's got the the golden boot winner, the top scorer at this level last season, sitting next to him. It's Curzon Ashton on the front foot. County mop it up. Warburton with the layoff to Walker. Walker playing a much more withdrawn role now. Turnbull to Stevenson, who's on the right wing now. He's gone away from McJanet. Good pass by Mulhern urging Thomas forward. The right back is the furthest man forward in this attack. And in the end has to settle for just a throw and it's well defended by Thornley. Yeah, Adam Thomas knows that territory very, very well. He played well right wing most of the season for County there. Didn't need a second invitation. Stevenson, it allowed him to go more central and County have got to make the most of this attack as Jordan Keane is going to be coming on for County any minute now. Spennymore have hit the post again. Second time they've hit the woodwork this afternoon. Remains Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. County are going to make a change, but it's not going to be Gilchrist, as Chris rightly says. Looks as though Jordan Keane is ready to come on. Free kick County, Palmer went down. Free kick midway inside the Curzon Ashton half. But Curzon themselves are keen to make a change shortly. They've got Reese Deacon, who's a striker, ready to come on. Oops, presumably for either McAtee or Brook. It'd be interesting to see who Jordan Keane comes on for. You'd imagine Turnbull or Walker. Don't really know 
It is going to be Turnbull. Chorley have a penalty up in the northeast. It's still nil-nil, but Chorley have a penalty up at Spennymoor. Spennymoor nil, Chorley nil, but the Magpies have a penalty. Meanwhile, County have a free kick here. Turnbull takes, it's too high, it goes out for a goal kick. And now it's all about what happens in the northeast. Jim Gannon, I think, has just heard, as he heard from the crowd. I think he's uh, wincing at something that's been said about the tactics. Well, there's a bit of a deaf silence now around Edgeley yeah, Park. People know. The news gets through. Here's a change for Curzon. We can keep checking. Deakins coming on for uh, McAtee. Straight swap up front. We know what will happen if it's a penalty. We wait for news from the North East, where Chorley have the penalty. Kenny Boxall just uh, reminding the fans to stay off the pitch after the game. This could be a real... There's news coming in, Chorley have missed the penalty. Well, look at the players on the pitch now for County. They don't know what the, the fans are cheering they for. They might be imagining that's a Spennymoor goal. It's not. But it's still nil-nil up <laughs> in the northeast. That's oh. the, uh, Chris, you said it. It'll be the biggest cheer of the day. Well, News from elsewhere has caused the biggest cheer of the day. Surely have missed from 12 yards. Oh, when something like that happens, you just wonder. You just wonder. Is it going to be your day? Is it going to be your week? Is it going to be your season? Oh my word, if you're a player out there thinking now, you've got to be thinking that uh, Spennymore has scored. Well done to Matt Gould. The goalkeeper has saved it. Well, if County can now make it count and capitalise on this energy. Here's Walker to Turnbull. Oh. Curzon bringing the ball clear though, they've got plenty forward in this attack as well. Danger here as the substitute goes for goal, Miller on target. It's only the second save Ben Hitchcock's had to make in 80 minutes of football. It was a fairly routine one as well as he dived to his right hand side, but what drama from the northeast. <laughs> Blakeman, I think he scored nine goals this season, Adam Blakeman. He is normally so reliable from set pieces nine goals he's got this season but his penalty has been saved by uh, Spennymoor goalkeeper Gould well, uh, and the cheer around Edgley Park 6,000 raising their voices I think I'm going to get a taxi to Spennymoor and buy him a pint you should sign him <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't get in <laughs> oh, the referee is going to show a card here to the centre forward Ryan Brook first booking of the day your heart sank, didn't it? Oh. When you heard, especially when they just hit the post as well at the other end. You just think this is it. It's in Charlie's hands now, but and it still is to a degree. County still got it to do. Well, that penalty miss may just have cost them the title. Oh, Jim Gannon's furious at Frank Mulhern yeah. there for giving Late that tackle. away. Needless foul. He's gonna. I bet he'll get a booking now as well. He will do. Silly tackle from Frank Mulhern, that didn't need to do it. Frank Mulhern, it'll be his eighth booking of the season if he does see yellow, and I think he will. Mulhern is refusing at the moment to go towards the referee, and Matty Walker is saying, Look, come on, Frank, well, at least go over to it. So, free kick to Curzon Ashton. County unable to build on those two first half goals. Uh, that miss was, uh, Frank Mulhern's been named the man of the match and just picked up that booking well, can he cap a man of the match performance with a goal it's Thornley clears his lines the little flick on County under pressure here but well defended Scott Duxbury Turnbull now, oh he's turned but he's turned into trouble he's lucky to get away with that Paul Turnbull didn't realise there was a man right behind him. As a result, he smashes the ball upfield. It sails over Mulhern's head. 
So just to reiterate, still nil nil up in the northeast. Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. County still leading 2 0 here. It means that both Chorley and County are locked at the top of the table on 79 points, but Chorley have a four goals better goal difference. That's why it matters so much that County still push on here in these closing seven and a half minutes and try and have this season. Remarkable support, County support just been growing and growing as the belief that there might be something special happening in SK3 has also been growing. Here's Matty Warburton glancing the ball on to Mulhern who holds it up nicely. Has support from Osborne coming in off the left. He plays a lovely reverse pass then to Mulhern who's inside the area. Mulhern, the goalkeeper, bats it away. Stevenson couldn't get there. Turnbull does. Takes it away then from Sam Walker who was just about to pull the trigger and the move breaks down completely. My word. Can't count it. It's just that final, final kick is working. I can't. Paul Turnbull, you hear the frustration from the teal end. He took it off Sam Walker's boot while he was mid-swing. Uh, the two of them just have a quick word there, and it's all handshakes, but County there. Frank Mulhern had it in the area with Air, uh, Osborne and Stevenson ready to go. It's fallen for Sam Walker. County their own undoing there. It could all come down to goal difference. County have to keep hunting. They have to keep going for more goals just wonder how long Jim Gannon's going to wait he's got the the golden boot winner the top scorer at this level last season sitting next to him it's Curzon Ashton on the front foot County mop it up Warburton with the layoff to Walker Walker playing a much more withdrawn role now Turnbull to Stevenson who's on the right wing now he's gone away from McJanet good pass by Mulhern urging Thomas forward the right back is the furthest man forward in this attack and in the end has to settle for just a throw and it's well defended by Thornley yeah Adam Thomas knows that territory very very well he played our right wing most of the season for County there didn't need a second invitation Stevenson it allowed him to go more central and County have got to make the most of this attack as Jordan Keane is going to be coming on for County any minute now Spennymore have hit the post again second time they've hit the woodwork this afternoon Remains Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. County are going to make a change, but it's not going to be Gilchrist, as Chris rightly says. Looks as though Jordan Keane is ready to come on. Free kick County, Palmer went down. Free kick midway inside the Curzon Ashton half. But Curzon themselves are keen to make a change shortly. They've got Reese Deacon, who's a striker, ready to come on. Which presumably for either McAtee or Brook. It'd be interesting to see who Jordan Keane comes on for. You'd imagine Turnbull or Walker. But don't really know. It is going to be Turnbull. Chorley have a penalty up in the northeast. It's still nil-nil, but Chorley have a penalty up at Spennymore. Spennymore nil, Chorley nil, but the Magpies have a penalty. Meanwhile, County have a free kick here. Turnbull takes, it's too high, it goes out for a goal kick. And now it's all about what happens in the northeast. Jim Gannon, I think, has just heard, has he heard from the crowd? I think he's uh, wincing at something that's been said about the tactics. Well, there's a bit of a deaf silence now around Edge yeah, of the Park. People know. The news gets through. Here's a change for Curzon. We can keep checking. Deakins coming on for uh, McAtee. Straight swap up front. We know what will happen if there's a penalty. We wait for news from the northeast. Where Chorley have the penalty. Kenny Boxall just uh, reminding the fans to stay off the pitch after the game. This could be a real. There's news coming in. Chorley have missed the penalty. Well, look at the players on the pitch now for County. They don't know what they the fans are cheering for. They might be imagining that's a Spennymore goal. It's not. But it's still nil-nil up <laughs> in the northeast. That's oh. the, uh, Chris, you said it. It'll be the biggest cheer of the day. Well, News off. from elsewhere has caused the biggest cheer of the day. Surely have missed from 12 yards. Oh, when something like that happens, you just wonder. You just wonder. Is it going to be your day? Is it going to be your week? 
is it going to be your season? Oh my word, if you're a player out there thinking now, you've got to be thinking that uh, Spennymore has scored. Well done to Matt Gould. The goalkeeper has saved it. Well, if County can now make it count and capitalise on this energy. Here's Walker to Turnbull. Oh. It's Curzon bringing the ball clear, though. They've got plenty forward in this attack as well. Danger here as the substitute goes for goal. Miller on target. It's only the second save Ben Hitchett had to make in 80 minutes of football. It was a fairly routine one as well as he dived to his right-hand side. But what drama from the northeast. <laughs> Blakeman, I think he scored nine goals this season, Adam Blakeman. He is normally so reliable from set pieces. Nine goals he's got this season. But his penalty has been saved by uh, Spennymore goalkeeper Gould. Well, uh, and the cheer around Edgley Park, 6,000 raising their voices. I think I'm going to get a taxi to Spennymore and buy him a pint. You should sign him. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't get in. <laughs> well, the referee's going to show a card here to the centre forward, Ryan Brook. First booking of the day. Oh, your heart sank, didn't it? Oh. When you heard. Especially when they just hit the post as well at the other end. You just think. This is it, it's in Charlie's hands now, but... And it still is to a degree, County's still got it to do. Well, that penalty miss may just have cost them the title. Oh, Jim Gannon's furious at Frank Mulhern yeah. there for giving Late that tackle. away. Needless foul. He's gonna, I bet he'll get a booking now as well, he will do. Silly tackle from Frank Mulhern, that didn't need to do it. Frank Mulhern, it'll be his eighth booking of the season if he does see yellow and I think he will Mulhern is refusing at the moment to go towards the referee and Matty Wolves is saying look come on Frank at least go over to it so free kick to Curzon Ashton County unable to build on those two first half goals but uh, that miss Paul Hearn's been named the man of the match and just picked up that booking. Well, can he cap a man of the match performance with a goal? It's Thornley clears his lines. The little flick on, County under pressure here, but well defended Scott Duxbury. Turnbull now, oh he's turned but he's turned into trouble. He's lucky to get away with that Paul Turnbull. Didn't realise there was a man right behind him, as a result he smashes the ball upfield, it sails over Mulhern's head. So just to reiterate, still nil nil up in the northeast. Spennymore nil, Chorley nil. County still leading 2 0 here. It means that both Chorley and County are locked at the top of the table on 79 points, but Chorley have a four goals better goal difference. That's why it matters so much that County still push on here in these closing seven and a half minutes and try and add to that goal tally because goal difference could end up being the title decider. They've got to throw in now deep inside the Curzon Ashton half. Sam Minihan is going to be coming on shortly for, for County. Meanwhile, uh, Lewis Corey is coming on for Curzon Ashton. I find that an interesting one, Sam Minihan coming on, but he's not really a goal out there. How, how I've questioned the gaffer in the past home and proven wrong, I'm sure Jim will have a, a plan somewhere, but we did say if it was Gilchrist coming on, it'd be a, a reshuffle of shape. Well, now you get the impression it's going to have to be. It's Matty Warburton making way, Sam Minihan coming on. Well, it's an interesting one by the gaffer. I think Matty Warburton certainly deserves a standing ovation, and the gaffer gives him one. His goal today, the second for Stockport County, was very well taken. Sam Minahan, you probably see Elliot Osborne go into the number 10 role now. Adam Thomas moved further up the pitch. They've certainly got the personnel to play this formation, but I don't think it would have been the substitution many were thinking was going to come. Matty this Warburton must have been feeling the love then when he came off. You've got to say, John, the stewards have taken a line in front of the Cheed Yeah, this is well, the final game of the season, this is it. But they're wearing the same kit as the Curzon Ashton players. <laughs> 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 the luminous green kit. Still no further news from the North East. Still nil nil. Still six or seven minutes to go in that one. Just 
and uh, Chris maybe have a look at the formation now as uh, Minions come on here's Osborne across the face of goal nobody turned it in <coughs> Duxbury keeps it alive on the opposite side Walker's there in support the referee spots a foul by Duxbury free kick to the visitors he's given a throw in has it what an interesting the ball bounces in the six yard box helping nobody there to attack it incredible great cross from Osborne by the way looks as though County have gone to a back three with Adam Thomas as a centre half now Sam Minion's playing wide on the right still Darren Stevenson now back on the left and he's taken them all on Darren Stevenson <laughs> great skill great support from Duxbury into the box for Mulhern Mulhern on the corner tries to turn and manufacture the opening for the shot but his uh, route to goal was blocked Rowney able to clear nice skill from Sean Miller he's gone away from Turnbull very comfortably but he can't pass the ball through the gap to Corey because Adam Thomas the makeshift centre half was there to cover County now on the counter attack Thornley beats Mulhern in the air Corey takes over the substitute plays it down the left touch line Lewis Corey the Aussie winger who's uh, actually come through the ranks at Manchester City as a youngster as a schoolboy before a spell at uh, Blackburn Rovers signed for uh, Curzon in September here's Minihan right wing has he won a corner he has indeed yeah good play that from Sam Minihan he's not been on the pitch long and we speak about some players taking a few minutes to get into the rhythm of the game well he's not took that time at all County are going to make one final substitution and it's Jordan Keane we're not going to see Gilchrist today Jordan Keane coming on I mean, Paul Turnbull, Paul Turnbull right? making yeah. weight he was left for dead wasn't he in that last attack uh, terrific steward for the club Paul Turnbull he just sits in the front of the defence there standing ovation the Paul Turnbull 221 appearances now for the Hatters off he comes to innovation. Jordan Keane onto the pitch, and his height could be useful yeah. on occasions like this. I think that's why Jim was keen to make the change before the corner, you know. Well, he's going straight into the mixer, isn't he, Jordan Keane? Well, I thought so, but now he's, uh, <laughs> he's now stopped. Walking away. Anyway, corner county, Walker to take, left footed in swinger. Still nil nil at Spennymore. Walker's corner deep towards Stott who heads it towards the uh, the goal but it's a, a looping header that loops over the bar and it stays 2-0 to the Hatters three minutes left in this one another goal would be fantastic for Stockport County it'd be so I mean they could have done with a couple it's not they're not going to get another couple you would have thought now but we could still get one. As it stands, it's going to come down to County needing a hatful of goals away at Basement Club Nuneet next weekend to guarantee the title. To guarantee the title. Do you know what, though? I think... Would you take that at the start of I'll the season? I'll take that. I'll take that because Chorley, well, they're at home to Bradford Park Avenue and that is the kind of game where anything could happen. Bradford Park Avenue might be clinging on to the final playoff spot so they'll certainly well however you look at it they'll certainly have something to play for Thank County have got another corner and remember Chris they can add to that goal difference today that would be the ideal wouldn't it oh, if, if you go into the final game of the season three goals behind but you're playing the club relegated weeks ago I mean Jim's talked about drama this season that would be it County corner, right footed in swing, a deep from Osborne towards Palmer, didn't quite reach him, the defender got a touch on it, Minihan will keep it alive on this near side, in fact he plays it off Lewis Corey to win himself a throw in, which uh, Adam Thomas will take. There's no option for him to throw no, to. Nobody came short, normally Matty Warburton would do that, Jordan Keane eventually obliges, Thomas will cut a ball through the gap for Osborne, who can give it back to Adam Thomas. Thomas now being shepherded away from the goal by the Curzon defence but look at this great football from the Hatters very unlucky as Keane goes down the line Adam Thomas tries to collect the ball just runs over nice Keane's play. toes it was uh, yeah good football it was nice play and it was, it was intricate but with no end product 
counts for very little. Throwing for the Nash in their left back area, helped on by Corey towards Miller. Miller challenged by Palmer. The ball breaks loose, and Palmer from inside the Curzon half has played a back pass to Ben Hinchliffe. County need the ball to be travelling in the other direction. Hinchliffe obliges. Mulhern couldn't reach it. Too high for him, but it's gone out for a county throw near side. The Hatters still leading by two goals to nil. Both goals in the opening 25 minutes, and it's still nil-nil at Spennymoor. Here's Thomas, driving run from him. Osborne takes over on the right wing, but his cross is woeful. He's actually managed to find the, what, the 18th, 19th row of the Cheat Lend. You could hear Jim Gannon from up here saying, cross, cross, cross. There's going to be three minutes to go. If County can get a four goals is a big ask, even against Nuneaton. But they'd have to win by five and hope Chorley didn't. Yeah, whatever Chorley win by, County would have to win by uh, four more. Here's Darren Stevenson down that left wing. Oh! The referee has awarded a free kick to Curzon and Ashton, deep in their own half. Of course, uh, County are relying on other teams, so they could still rely on Bradford Park Avenue doing them a huge favour. If they go to Chorley and get something, and that really would put the cat among the pigeons. You can't see anything other than a County win next weekend, down at Nuneaton, already relegated. Oh! As news comes in, has there been a goal up in the northeast? I don't think it is. I don't think it is, by the way. I think that's a false alarm. You do get this, you do get this around the rounds on the final day. But I think that's a false alarm. Mean. Very mean. Bradford uh, losing three goals to one, so you'd have thought they've got it all to play for exactly. next weekend. Exactly, Chris. Still nil-nil up in the northeast. Spennymore nil, Chorley nil as a cross comes in from the left flank. Here's a chance. Mulhern should have done better, had all the time in the world to pick his spot, but it was a, a lazy shot in the end from Frank Mulhern over the bar. County, by the way, with 14 attempts on goal this afternoon, 12 corners. Uh, the Nash with five attempts and four corners. County with two goals to the Nash's nil. Now then, we are hearing more dramatic news at the moment. This could be decisive. I can tell you, come on, County are back on top yes! of the league. <laughs> what an atmosphere inside this ground now. What a turnaround, and it's a goal that hasn't even been scored here. Spennymoor 1, Chorley 0 is confirmed as the latest score up in the northeast. Spennymoor have taken the lead. The Hatters are back on top of the table. The title is back in County's hands. I tell you what, there are people running to the players in the dugout now for County to show them the phone to say this is the score. Matty Warburton and Paul Turn will celebrate with <laughs> And they're four they minutes into hold on. time. Spennymore. Glenn Taylor, by the way, heading home 1 0 here at Edgeley Park. Here at Edgeley Park, there's a free kick to Curzon Ashton on the edge of the county penalty area. As it stands, the Hatters are back on top of the league. The free kick's gone straight into the county wall. Offside against the left-back McJanet. Free kick to county. The Hatters lead 2-0. Spennymoor are in front. Wow. Glenn Taylor's headed in at the far post up in the northeast in the dying seconds. What drama! Final and there goes the final whistle here, County have won 2 0. It's all about what happens up at Spennymoor now. The Moors are leading by a goal to nil. As it stands, County are top, and it's all over. It's all over at Spennymoor. County are back at the top of the league. They just need to go to bottom basement club Nunny next weekend and get a win, and the Hatters will be crowned champions of the National League North. What drama here at Edgley Park this afternoon, but more drama up in the northeast. Glenn Taylor has scored the decisive goal this season and when they hand out the Player of the Year awards, Chris Ridgway, I think Glenn Taylor should be on the list. <laughs> I'll give it in myself. I'll drive it in. The, uh, John, the fans are now hearing this. It's going off everywhere. 
unbelievable scenes at Edgley Park. County have won here by two goals to nil. They've done what they had to do. Both goals coming in the opening 25 minutes. After five minutes, Ash Palmer drilled home from a close certainly uh, taken corner to give the Hatters the advantage. Then on 25 minutes, Jake Kirby's cross picking out Matty Warburton and County's leading goal scorer, poaching at the near post to claim his 26th of the season, his first in 13. County went on dominating the game but couldn't add to those two goals. Elliot Osborne thought he should have had a penalty in the first half. Scott Duxby clipped the top of the bar in the second and Darren Stevenson missed a sitter midway through the second half. But what drama up in the northeast! Chorley missed a penalty through Adam Blakeman, and then Glenn Taylor for Spennymore, popping up with a last-minute winner to put the title back in County's hands. It's all on County now. All they have to do is go to bottom of the league, Nunny, next weekend, Chris, win the game, win the title. I have to keep checking the result. I can't believe it. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I mean. Talk about drama, talk about excitement, talk about why you follow this sport Look and why you Gannon. follow this football club. This is why you do it. Oh, what scenes here at Edgley Park. What scenes, absolutely brilliant. Listen to these fans. You cannot believe it, Chris. Who this, would have written that script? This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. This is what the season has been building up to. The whole season it has been building up to this. I'm getting my, my phone is going mad. People texting me saying it's in County's hands. Surely missing the missing the penalty. Spennymore hitting the post. And now one game to go. And if you you couldn't pick it, you couldn't pick a better team to play. You always felt there might be another twist in the tail. That proved to be the case. And it's all geared up now for a title party, hopefully at Nuneaton next weekend. And surely now, even county fans who've been used to massive disappointment must feel that this is the chance for their first league title in more than 50 years, Chris. John, this is quite possibly the most remarkable game I've seen at Edgeley Park. Uh, we were there in the 90s. We were there through those games. Uh, Ian Dowie own goals and Dave Jones promotion teams and, and everything else. But what we've just seen, <laughs> they're celebrating up in the gantry. <laughs> it's everywhere. Uh, it's just magical. The players start their lap of honour. This, of course, the traditional way to end a home league season. And maybe, just maybe, this is the end of their home league season. It was looking as though County might need another couple of games in the playoffs here at Edgley Park to finally secure promotion. But as it stands, fans who were drifting away suddenly came back when they heard that Spennymore striker Glenn Taylor had scored County's goal of the season. <laughs> to put the title back in their hands. They've got one hand on the trophy. They just need to do the job down at Nuneaton next weekend. And what a massive occasion that's going to be. And well done to Nuneaton as well. I know they're already relegated, but they've given County 2,500 tickets for that one. Even that won't be enough. But you have to say, Chris, at least, at least there's a chance now for a big promotion party down there next weekend. Oh, I think there's a big promotion party that begins now and ends well, in three or no, four weeks. No, we don't. We <laughs> can't have that. We cannot have that. We cannot take anything for granted Try telling that to that to you, no, it, you it's, count, it's county. It can still go wrong. <laughs> but uh, the lads have got to be professional this week, as I'm sure they will be. But what a great sight to see the lap of honour meaning something, Chris. Oh, the lap, it, it really is a honour now. It really is. It's not another season where we've just missed out. We've done well, it didn't happen for this reason or that reason. It's honour. And those players are getting the round of applause that each and every single one of them have just, they've earned, look at Jim leading yeah. the applause. They've earned this throughout the season, all those struggles. The noise you can hear gets louder and louder and that's because the players are coming round to our main stand here this afternoon. They make their way just in front of us. And what an ovation for their heroes in the blue and white this afternoon. Matty Warburton finally scoring his first league goal since February. 
and Ash Palmer getting his fourth of the season to set County on their way to victory. What a day it's been for the Hatters and what late, late drama up in the North East. And it was so, so good. I'm so pleased it's Spennymore who've done it as well. A fantastic <laughs> club, a great club up in the North East. They know their football up there and they have just done us the biggest favour you can ask for it. Well, it, we're going up as the chant around the ground. It's coming out the stadium speakers. It had to be Jim Gannon. It had to be this team. It had to happen on the last day of the season at home. We're Stockport County, we don't do things easily. But what when about, we do them. Jamie Stott as well, his last appearance in County Colours, Chris. <laughs> Sam Walker giving us a wave there. I'm not going to repeat what he just said. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was ecstasy that was coming out of his mouth. And Jamie Stott is a Stockport County player. He's, he's only on yeah. loan, but he's been, he's been integral. He's been just as important as Ash Palmer, Frank Malern, Matty Warburton, Ben Hinchley, anybody else in this team. He's a county player, as much as every single one of them out there. Well, it looked as though we were going to need a goal fest down at Nuneaton next weekend. As it stands, a 1-0, a scruffy 1-0 will do, and we don't really care how it happens. County have just got to go there and win. They'll be massive favourites, Chris, going down there, but they'll still have to prepare properly for that one. And I know Nuneaton has struggled, it's, it, it just wouldn't be county, would it? You can't take it for granted. No, I think Jim Gannon will do everything. He'll treat it like the cup final it, it, that it is. It's bigger than a cup final. It's bigger than the FA Trophy final. It's bigger than anything else. Well, Usually, the last few years, we've been sitting here going, another season in this division. Well, now, it doesn't just look like that's not going to happen, but it looks like we're taking the trophy with us. What will it feel like to be a Chorley fan tonight, though, Chris? And I, I mean... I've got to say, after all the disappointments they've had in the last four years in terms of missing out on promotion, your heart breaks for them, doesn't it? I know we've got to take advantage of it, and I'm delighted we are doing, but goodness me, surely, <laughs> they've blown it. It probably feels like it did being a Stockport County fan at five o'clock on Saturday. It probably feels something like that, maybe a little bit worse. Um, it's horrible to say. And Chris, by the way, the professionalism starts today. Look at Jordan Keane and Sam Minion here. The, uh, the substitutes in the second half, they're doing some running here, stretching out. It started already, that preparation has started now. Yeah, uh, Jim Gannon will let the players enjoy this moment, but mark my words, it will only be a moment. When, as, soon, as soon as the, the usual routine kicks back in, it's business as usual. There's a job to do against a team that have taken points off County earlier in the season. So they've got reason to... They've got reason to think County will be on the beach. They've got, they've got to have self-belief. It's a massive game for them. It's their last game in this division as well. They want to do out with a bit of pride. They want to go out with a bit of pride. Sorry, so I think, don't take them lightly, but we're strong favourites. I cannot remember many afternoons like this, Chris, I have to say. And it's uh, I've been watching this club a long, long time now and commentating for over 20 years. But the drama of this afternoon... I don't think I've ever felt or experienced anything like it because the drama was happening 200 miles away. <laughs> there was there was teasing cheers. There was groans at the penalty. There was a there false was alarm, cheers. wasn't there? Somebody thought they'd scored. There was and they hadn't. cheers when it 